Good afternoon, my name is Anada Kowalczyk and I am presenting Madonna of the Meadow. Imagine a time where women had a place in society that was dictated by male prejudice. Women were expected to stay within confines of the home and childbirth was treated as the most important aspect of a woman. The lenses I looked through to understand my artwork were cultural studies, gender studies, and iconography. Until the Renaissance, most Europeans followed the teachings of capitalism strictly. Many people had little exposure to any form of education. Beyond this, and science was not as well understood. Very little of what the church taught people about life was challenged. Those who spoke out against the church were accused of heresy and labeled a heretic, which is someone who holds unorthodox beliefs. Heretics were often subject to extreme forms of punishment, such as being burnt at the stake in front of the townspeople. Until the printing press was embedded in the mid-15th century, the European population was not highly literate. People did not have much opportunity to seek information for themselves and were dependent upon the clergy, who were religious leaders, for education and spiritual guidance. This added to the power of the Catholic Church. In contrast to medieval times, the Renaissance was a period of questioning and discovery. People started to think independently and experiment with new ideas and concepts. As more and more advancements were made in the arts and sciences, the Catholic Church began to lose the power and influence it had once held over people's beliefs about the world. Artists, writers, poets, scientists, and philosophers in many different places were very much inspired by the exciting achievements occurring in Italy. One way in which the Renaissance is thought to have led to the European Reformation is that it promoted a rise in secularism across Europe, which is the belief that religion should be kept separate from the public or political life of a society. It also encourages the belief that people should have the right to think and make decisions freely and not to have their religion dominate their lives entirely. This is Italian Renaissance painter and architect Raphael Senzio, born on April 6, 1483 in Urbino, Italy. 1483 at that time was a cultural center that encouraged the arts. Raphael's father, Giovanni Santi, was a painter for the Duke of Urbino. Giovanni taught young Raphael basic painting techniques and exposed him to the principles of humanistic philosophy. 15th century Italy was unlike any other place in Europe. It was divided into independent city-states, each with a different form of government. Florence, where the Italian Renaissance began, was an independent republic. It was also a banking and commercial capital. Wealthy Florentines flaunted their money and power by becoming patrons or supporters of artists and intellectuals. In this way, the city became the cultural center of Europe and of the Renaissance. The Renaissance, a revival of the cultural ideals of ancient Greece and Rome during the 15th and 16th centuries in Europe, based on a new scientific spirit of observation, painting and sculpture became more naturalistic and artists used perspective to portray a three-dimensional world rather than the spiritual space depicted by medieval artists. The Madonna and Child, painted by Giotto di Bondade, is a flat two-dimensional, whereas Raphael's is more realistic and three-dimensional. Both paintings depict the traditional symbol of Mary's purity as well as a reference to the innocence lost through original sin. Raphael started an apprenticeship under Umbrian master Pietro. By 1501, he was ready and was considered a master. Raphael offers us what is almost a mirror image of his master's composition, yet he overcomes the differences in planes and the apparent flatness of Perugino's paintings, imparting a three-dimensional feel to the composition position by distributing the same number of figures more freely in a space and also forging an integral visual link with the raised temple. The Madonna with the Christ Child and St. John the Baptist is a 1506 painting by Raphael Sanzio, which is now held in Constitutorius Museum in Vienna. It, uh, it is also known as Madonna del Prato, Madonna of the Meadow, or Madonna del Belvedere. The museum was opened around 1981 by Emperor Franz Joseph I of Austria-Hungary. Christianity remained and religious subjects were the most common themes in art. Some were highly critical of corruption in the Catholic Church, ultimately leading to the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century. Paintings became realistic, representing the living, visible world. Discovery of the laws of perspective put art on a rational footing that showed mathematically calculated depth and proportion, as we see in the Virgin Mary, John the Baptist, and baby Jesus in the Madonna of the Meadow.
By the end of the 15th century, Italy was being torn apart by one war after another. The kings of England, France, and Spain, along with Pope Julius II and the Holy Roman Emperor, battled for control of the wealthy peninsula. At the same time, the Catholic Church, which was itself racked with scandal and corruption, had begun a violent crackdown on dissenters. In 1545, the Council of Trent officially established the Roman Inquisition and the Italian Renaissance was over. Raphael, a great synthesizer, built along the ideas of others and blended them into a supremely great full unity. Some of those ideas were based off of Michelangelo. Michelangelo claimed Raphael knew everything about art from him, later becoming rivals, being traced back to their respective work in the Vatican in 1508. While Michelangelo was hard at work on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, the young Raphael arrived in Rome and immediately began attracting attention and adulation for his work in the Papel Apartments, which clearly showed the influence of Michelangelo. The completion of the Sistine Chapel should have been Michelangelo's moment of glory, and yet it seemed that his rival Raphael was getting all the attention and the commissions. Raphael won some highly desirable commissions, including tapestries for the Sistine Chapel, portraits of popes, and frescoes for the luxurious villa of Agostino Chigi, now known as Villa of Farnesina. The representation of the painting lies in the iconography of its religious figures, Baby Jesus, Virgin Mary, and John the Baptist. Madonna is the central figure and focus on the image being depicted as Virgin Mary, expressing motherhood, womanhood, and piety. The painting foreshadows the death of Christ on the cross. It is displayed in the action of the painting where St. John is handing Jesus a small cross and Mary is looking upon it knowing what is to come. There is a feeling of connection between all of them by the way they are all looking at each other and the cross through implied lines. The poses of the three are very relaxed, calm, and subdued. Revolutionizing visual art, the pyram pyramidal triangle symbolizes spiritual hierarchy and trinity which is a three-person unity father son and holy spirit in the madonna of the metal virgin mary is at the top representing a strong foundation being known as one of the greatest christian saints the triangle is pointed up representing the spiritual world which tells us florence society trusted god and obeyed his laws the impacted how they received and interacted with the world the madonna of the metal is the first of a series of full-length figure compositions that portray the Encounter between the child Jesus and the boy Baptist, who was actually a patron of Florence. The boy Baptist is supposed to have recognized and worshipped Christ as the Redeemer, even in their childhood. Raphael makes this clear by letting Christ take the cross from John. Raphael also learned the Florentine method of building up a composition in depth with figure masses. These figures are grouped as a single unit, but each retains its own individuality and shape. A unity of composition and suppression of an essentials is what distinguishes the works Raphael painted in Florence. As you see in the Madonna of the Metal, the substantial figure in, in a pyramidal arrangement like Leonardo's Madonna of the Rocks. Raphael uses chiaroscuro, as you can see around the thighs of Jesus and his arms, deep variations in the lighting and shading to portray the characters, and also for general dramatic and realistic effect. Raphael prefers clarity to obscurity using lighter tonalities compared to Leonardo's dusking modeling. Madonna of the Meadow is calm, soothing, bright, and happy despite allusions to the future. The deep hues of her blue cloak and red dress emphasize the triangle and force the baby Christ and John the Baptist further into the foreground. The baseline of the triangle is created by Mary's cloak. John marks the left corner. Jesus is at the center, and Mary's foot, high highlighted to compensate for its small size, marks the right corner. Raphael contrasts earthy tones and deeper shades in the middle and foreground against the pale bluish background to create a square. The combination square and triangle, both Renaissance symbols of the perfection of nature, provide status and unity. Each shape draws the viewer's eyes. The triangle directs atten attention to Mary's face. The square from Mary's chest to the bottom of the painting directs the viewer to the figures of Jesus and John. Raphael creates depth in the middle ground by showing small trees. In the background, he uses atmospheric perspective to create depth. The pale shades, blue tint, and smudge lines of the hills and village across the lake. Each figure casts a shadow on the ground, and shadowing between Mary and Jesus creates space between them to create volume. The three characters 
in a calm green meadow are linked by their facial looks and touching hands. The Virgin Mary is presented in a contrapostal pose, dressing a gold-bordered blue mantle set against a red dress and her right leg lying along a diagonal. The blue embodied the church and the red Christ's death, with the Madonna the uniting of mother church with Christ's sacrifice. With her eyes fixed on Christ, her head was turned to the left and slightly inclined, and in her hands she held up Christ as he leaned forward unsteadily to touch the miniature cross held by John. The plant poppy refers to Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. According to Vasari, Raphael's premature death on Good Friday, April 6, 1520, which was possibly his 37th birthday, was caused by a night of of excessive sex with Ludi, after which he fell into a fever and not telling his doctors that this was its cause was given the wrong cure which killed him. Fasari also says that Raphael had also been born on Good Friday, which in 1483 fell on March 28th. Whatever the cause in his acute illness, which lasted 15 days, Raphael was composed enough to receive the last rites and to put his affairs in order. He dictated his will, and when she left sufficient funds for his mistress's care, entrusted to his lawyer's servant, Baviera, and left most of his studio contents to Giulio, Romano, and Pini. At his request, Raphael was buried in the Pantheon. His funeral was extremely grand, attended by large crowds. For my artwork, I chose to take a photo of my cousin, who is the ideal woman today. When we think and talk about the perfect woman today, she should have blonde hair, a curvy body, and shows it off. Tons of makeup to look like the perfect Barbie. How do you personally think a woman should look today in our society? Does all that matter? Thank you, guys. Good afternoon. My name is Anada Kowalczyk, and I am presenting Madonna of the Meadow. Imagine a time where a woman had a place in society that was dictated by male prejudice, Women were expected to stay within confines of the home, and childbirth was treated as the most important aspect of a woman. The lenses that look